Hey everyone, today we're talking about Git, an extremely useful tool that happens to be a tiny bit difficult to learn. So we're going to go through it as quickly as possible. There's a lot to cover, so let's get started. I have notes here. You can find the link in the description. Let's start with the basics. What is Git? So officially, it is a distributed version control system. It allows us to track changes in an application, in a folder, in a single file over time across different users, different computers. Back in high school and college, I had to write a bunch of long papers, and I was always indecisive about how they should begin and conclude. So I would duplicate them and then give them a new name, like essay, new intro, and then change the intro. And I would do that over and over and end up with like 20 versions. And it kind of works when it's one file and one person, but it would be impossible on a large project like this one. This is thousands and thousands of files in one project. It's a top secret thing I'm working on right now. It's not top secret. You'll, you'll hear about it soon. And there are multiple people working on it. We're each working together on different pieces. We're sharing those pieces. We're testing new things out, deciding if we wanna include them or not. And so we're using Git to help in that process. We've made thousands and thousands of separate commits over the last nine or 10 months. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is make sure you have Git installed. So I have notes on how to install it. It's just a download. Whether you're on a Mac or a PC, you go to Git. The link is in the notes that I created. Click on your OS. And along with that, you'll need to use a terminal. So on a Mac or Linux machine, use the default terminal app or iTerm or whatever you prefer. If you're on Windows, you can use PowerShell. You can use the Git bash terminal, which actually comes with Git. The next thing you need to do just to configure Git is tell it your username or a name and your email. Now this is not used to log in anywhere. This is only used to track who made what changes. Here's an example of what I'm talking about. This is a list of different checkpoints or commits that have been made on a project and we can see who did each thing. For example, here Ellie configured Python for a hooks exercise. So that name and that email is just used to identify yourself. Now on that note, let's quickly talk about GitHub. Git and GitHub are completely separate tools. GitHub does rely on Git. You need to understand Git to use GitHub, but you can use Git entirely on your own. It is the main tool. I'll have a separate video later on talking about GitHub. So now that you have Git installed, let's talk about repositories. Repositories are the containers for Git. Anytime you want to use Git on a project, on a, even a single file, you need to initialize a repository. And the command to do that is git init. So in my terminal, I have a new empty folder for this video called git video. If I want to use git to track my changes in this folder, I would run git init. All right, so I'm gonna run that now, git init, and it tells me initialized empty git repository. It doesn't look like anything happened, but if I use ls-a to view hidden files and folders, there's now a .git folder in here. This is created by Git, and it's where it stores all of the information about your repository. So you don't need to touch it, but it's there. So now that we've initialized a repository, the next command we should talk about is one called git status. Git status is something you'll do all the time. It's how you check in on the status of your repo, your repository. If I type git status, it tells me no commits yet, nothing to commit, start making or copying or doing something so that we can actually track your files. So let's imagine I'm working on a simple project. I'm going to make a new file called index.html. Now let's type git status and it tells me, hey, untracked files, there's a new file here, index.html. So if I wanted to make a commit, a checkpoint right now, just after I made index.html, there are two steps to committing. We have to decide which files or which changes we want to add into the staging area. And then from the staging area, we then commit. Again, it's a two-step process. We add into the staging area. It's like a little holding pen. And then we say commit. And the reason we do that is that on large projects, you might have hundreds of changes across dozens of files. And you might want to make a smaller commit only on the CSS files that changed. So you add the CSS files that changed and then commit those files selectively. So the first step is to add git add into the staging area. So we say what file we want to add. So we'll do git add index.html. And if we type git status again, you'll now see this is green, but it also says 
changes to be committed. Earlier it said untracked files. Now it says changes to be committed. So we can make our first commit right now. There are a couple different ways to commit. The simplest way, and the only one I'm going to show you here, uses the dash "-m flag, the message flag. Get commit dash "-m", and then a message in quotes. And whatever string you pass in will be associated with that commit. It's a little message that should explain what you're committing. What are the contents? Why are you making a commit right now? So in this case, all I did was make an empty file. So I'll go with git commit dash m create index.html, like that. Okay, so we get a little message here. Let's type git status now. It says nothing to commit, working tree clean. That means there's no changes that haven't been committed. But I can now type a new command, git log. And git log is going to just give me a history of commits. You can see here is a commit I made by me at this time and date. And this was the message. So let's make some more changes. I'll add an app.js. I'll also add a, let's go with uh, styles.css. And then I'll open them up in the editor. All right, so I have all three empty files. I'll add in my basic skeleton here. And I'm going to add some code to app.js. Imagine we're adding in some substantial code. I'll just do an alert. Hello there. And save. I'm going to save my index file as well. And let's also add in a script tag so we can include our app.js. And let's add an h1 that says git demo page and save. So this is what I should see in the browser. Hello there, git demo page. Let's pretend that was some substantial code. Let's type git status now. And it tells us two different things. First, two files that are untracked completely. We've never told git about these files and then one file that was modified, index.html. So what would make sense as a commit here? Let's maybe group together our index.html change and the app.js that we created. Let's make a commit with those two. And then we'll add some styles, and we'll make a commit with the styles.css. So we'll do git add index.html. We can chain these together like this, two files. And then we type git status again. Now it tells us this is going to be your next commit if you were to commit right now. So we'll do git commit dash m. Let's go with add app logic. Fine, it's not a great commit message, but we didn't really do much. Now if I type git log, we have two commits. First, we made our index HTML, then we added app logic. So now let's do a couple more changes to our CSS file. We'll give the body a background of aquamarine and h1's background of purple. I also made sure to include my style sheet with a link tag, and this is what it looks like. Now let's go and commit that. So I'll clear my terminal, and once again, we see, since you last committed, your index changed, and we're not tracking styles.css, so I'm going to track it with git add, and I have two choices. I can add them one at a time, like we've seen, or there's another command, git add dot. And this will add everything you see here, all those changes, into the staging area. So now if I type git status, you can see we have both here. We created styles. We modified index. Let's now commit. And this one will be add basic styles. And then let's do one more quick change in our styles. Let's actually change the background color to be uh, on the body. Instead of aquamarine, even though that's a great color, let's go with olive. So that looks like this now. Okay, then I'm gonna type git status again and commit this. Now all of these commits, imagine I'm actually making substantial changes. I'm adding new features. I'm trying new things out. I'm not just changing one property, but for the sake of time, I am changing one property. We'll git add either dot or styles.css, they're equivalent here, and then commit. And this one will just be change background color on body, okay? So now we have, what, four commits, and we haven't even seen how to use these different commits. What is the point? It's not just to have a log of what you did. We can also go back at any point and start over here or here or at the very beginning if we wanted to. The way we do that is with another command called git checkout. So git checkout and then a commit hash. These are commit hashes right here. So why don't we just go back Hmm, let's go back one commit to the previous color. 
I'm going to copy that hash and then get checkout and paste that in. Now we get a long message. We don't really have a ton of time to go into what this all means. What is detached head? It sounds very violent. But let's go take a look at our app code now. Well, it's back to Aquamarine. And I refresh. It's like we went back in time. It's a time machine. We could even go back and check out uh, the very beginning of our code. Like this. Same thing, as long as I copy that hash correctly. Now this is what I see in my editor, an empty index. There's nothing to see if I refresh the page. So that's kind of cool, right? You can go back. You probably wouldn't go back to the very, very beginning, but it is cool that you can do that. Now how do we go back to where we want to be? First, we have to talk about the idea of branches. So a branch in Git is like a timeline of your application, of the repository. We can create branches at will, which is a, it's a great way to experiment, to try new things. For example, if I had one app we'd been working on for a year, and then I had a crazy idea about how I wanted to style it, I might make a new branch to do that. I give it a name like new styles or a crazy idea. And then on that branch, I do all of my work rather than on the main branch of the app that everybody else is working on. I can have my own just side timeline whenever I want. So the main branch that we work on, the main standard branch that is created by default is called master. And you can see that if I scroll back up, there's been references to master on branch master. We never said we should be on master. If I type get branch right now, this is not going to make me a branch. This is going to list the branches. So we have master and the star tells us you're actually on a different branch called head detached at this commit. So whenever we go back with git checkout, like we just did, to look at some other commit, an older version of our code, we are taken off of the master branch. So we can go back to it with the same command, git checkout master. And this will take me back to my master branch. Now if I type git branch, you can see master. And if I type git status on branch master, my code is back, back from the dead. We refresh the page, it all looks good. We can also make our own branch whenever we want and give it a name. Git branch, if you don't provide a name, is just going to list the branches. Git branch and then a new name will make a new branch. So let's do something like git branch crazy colors. Now if we type git branch, we have this new crazy colors branch and I can check it out just like we checked out a commit. Git checkout crazy colors. Now nothing will have changed in our code. All we've done is move over from one timeline to another, but we're at the same like progress. We're at the same commit, we've just moved over. If I type git log, we still have all of these earlier commits. But now if we make some crazy changes, which I'll skip and fast forward through. Okay, I updated my index, I added in some styles. This is coming from a code pen by this guy, Manuel Pinto. So this is my site now, crazy colors. I tried it on a new branch. I don't know if everyone's going to like it, but I like it, so I'm going to commit it. If I type git status right now, let me clear this and try it again. You can see I modified my index and my styles. Let's git add everything and git commit. We'll go with add animated bg. Cool. I type git log. Here's my log of my commits. Add animated background. But remember, I'm on the branch called crazy colors. If I go back to master with checkout, let's type git log here. It doesn't say anything about my crazy colors. It doesn't say that last commit that I created, which was add animated background. That's not here because that was on a different timeline. So I didn't impact my original timeline master. And I refresh, we're back to this. So I think it's pretty cool stuff. We have these different timelines. We can manage and try new things. I, I do this all the time. When I'm working on a, a big curriculum repository with a bunch of instructors at a boot camp. I might want to try adding in a new exercise or completely overhauling the React slides, but I don't want to impact the original React slides until I know if we want to adopt those changes in master. So I work on a branch called cult changes or new idea for React slides. That's a bit long. I make the changes. I present them to people if they like them, then I merge. So that is the last piece of our puzzle here. How do I merge in those changes I made? Let's say I, my team likes that animated background. How do I get it to be on master? 
It's easy. There's a command called git merge, and then we specify the name of a branch. So my branch that I want to merge into master is called crazy colors. So git merge crazy colors. And take a look at that. I have this little chart that tells me insertions and deletions. Let's type git log. You can see I now have that commit. I'm still on master, but I now have that code and all of the commits that came from my crazy colors branch. And most importantly, while the code is here and I refresh, we get our beautiful colors. So that's it for this video. There's a ton more to get that we haven't talked about. Of course, this is just a basic intro. And even at that, I would expect complete beginners to be a little confused or lost. Reference the handouts, give yourself a chance to practice things, and eventually it will click. Thanks as always for watching. Please consider commenting and subscribing. I'll see you next week.